Hi everyone, Kate here for a Victorian wrap up. My goal this year was to have one video for each Victorian book that I read, but um, this is a good problem to happen. I got behind uh, catching up filming with my Victorian reading. So I have six books to tell you about. That means that I have gotten to 14 new to me. Uh, okay, sorry, I have five books to tell you about, but I'm still to 14 new to me Victorian books read this year. And I am over halfway through the project because I'm trying to get to 25. It's so exciting. And I just love that this has me so excited for Victober, um, which will be here before we know it. Um, in the meantime, I can just keep reading Victorian novels and planning out Victober content. Uh, so, okay, the first one, and the one that I titled the video in honor of, uh, because it, um, I have some feelings about this book, Poor Miss Finch. Uh, so I did this as a buddy read with Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, uh, my friend Elizabeth Brink, and uh, then uh, Jess, uh, dear readers, this is Jess, um, Jess, who I kind of strong-armed into doing this buddy read with us, I read the first chapter and was like, oh my goodness, this could be a new favorite Wilkie Collins. I could have a new favorite leading lady. I sounded all the alarms for a new favorite Victorian novel and things came crashing down quickly. Poor Miss Finch is about a blind woman in Victorian uh, England. So there's going to be a lot of stigma, a lot of kind of misunderstandings that people have about her, um, Lucilla. And then there are um, twin brothers that are a big part of this plot. Um, everything is so twisty turny. I can't say much without giving away too much, but I do know that um, Lucilla feels like her life is really missing something. And then she finds love and there's just so many weird elements to this book. And I found Lucilla to be such a frustrating character. Um, and I, I get that this book is interesting from a disability representation standpoint, but that to me does not make a great novel. That's just an interesting element of it. And so I'm not offended by the disability representation. I just didn't like it because I thought Lucilla was a terrible character. I thought she was so annoying and immature. And then the kind of grand resolution at the end that's supposed to be very romantic just made me hate her 10 times more. I thought she was so shallow, so incredibly shallow. And I was not rooting for her. I did not care about her. Uh, her stepmother, who I thought was going to be kind of interesting, wasn't on screen that much and then just didn't have that much nuance or I don't know interesting aspects to her character um and the plot certain sensation novels are the re amount of ridiculous that I can get behind and just be like I'm gonna settle in and I'm just gonna ride this out this was to such a level of ridiculousness that I couldn't handle it I couldn't cope with the amount my brain didn't know what to do with it so it was very very frustrating reading experience. I almost DNF'd it several times and I hate read the second half of it. So this um, was not an enjoyable book um, and I wasn't even happy about the happy ending. I didn't even care if these characters, well the one character I cared if they had a happy ending, but it was just bizarre and um, had no one for me to love and then the other people that I didn't dislike, I just didn't have any feelings. I had zero investment in their characters. So yeah, a complete miss. Um, so Man and Wife by Wilkie Collins remains my favorite of his books. Uh, the next one that I read that was a big um, departure from that was Idols of the King by Alfred Lord Tennyson. This is a narrative poem all about Arthurian legends. And, um, you know, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, uh, Fair Guinevere. And this was so beautiful and evocative. And it was just incredibly rich and uh, such a rewarding reading experience. I did that kind of immersion reading where you, you listen to it on audio while you're reading the physical book. And it just, I really 
adored this. I just love legend and folklore and myth and it, the language is so rich. I, I just, I can't do it justice or speak well enough about this poem. If you're mildly interested in uh, Arthurian legend, then I highly recommend this. I will say the amount of dysfunctional relationships in this poem is astounding. <laughs> There's not too many people who just end up happy. Um, such beautiful imagery and um, I just, I highly recommend it if you're all interested in legends or um, or myths, particularly Arthurian legends. The next one that I read was a delightful little novella from Charlotte Mary Young, and it is called Countess Kate. I read this with Stephanie um, from Miss Richards Reads, and that's reminding me, Stephanie, you left me a Voxer message, and I need to respond to it uh, regarding this book. Um, it's so charming. It's all about Kate, who um, has grown up in... Um, your kind of average um, uh, household. They're, you know, above middle class, but they're certainly not excessively wealthy. And then Kate is made an heiress. She is made a countess and she goes to live with these well-to-do rel relatives and she hates her life there. <laughs> they they think she's so unladylike and unrefined and doesn't read the right kinds of books and doesn't act the right way, doesn't say the right things, and she ends up being so stifled while she's there. I found the character of Kate so endearing and how she feels like she's kind of a, you know, a, a square peg in a round hole living in refined society and um, just how um, kind of the unsinkable uh, nature of her personality. She couldn't be held back. And, you know, when she would try to um, not be true to herself, things didn't go so well. And then a really lovely resolution is made at the end. And it was just delightful. And um, I'm just so excited to continue to explore Charlotte Mary Young's work. I think this would be a great entry point to her um, because it has all of the charm of her writing style, um, but it's very it's a very brief book. I think it's just over 100 pages, but it has a really satisfying uh, a conclusion to it. So I definitely recommend Countess Kate if you're looking for a short Victorian book to read. And then the next one that I read, another short one, that I didn't enjoy as much was Wyndham's Daughter by Annie S. Swan. I had heard about Annie Swan um, through some kind of Google rabbit trail. I found out about her. She was a Christian writer in the Victorian era. And Wyndham's Daughter really tackles, actually, um, socialism, which is not your typical kind of Victorian... Um, topic that you're going to have. And it was really interesting to see that. And also it just felt a lot more modern than other Victorian books. One, because it was written in like 1898. So there are, I'm pretty sure cars are referenced in it. Uh, but in addition to that, um, the young people, the like independence and freedom that they have feels very different from a book like Wives and Daughters, where you're constantly chaperoned, you know, you there, there's no question of going to um, uh, get a job on your own, none of that. And so this felt really different and unique. So it was a neat window, <laughs> excuse me, window into another aspect of society. Um, but the characters for me, felt a bit like types and not full flesh and blood characters. I did like her writing well enough. As I was reading it, that's that's also now I'm remembering. As I was reading it, I really enjoyed it, but I knew I was going to forget a lot of it when I finished it. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so yes, it is enjoyable. It just wasn't that memorable. And I was really curious to try Annie S. Swan. I don't know if I'm motivated to try more of her books. Maybe if I, you know, the, I don't know, this very specific hankering comes and there's nothing else Victorian that I'm really interested in reading. Um, so I will let you know. Uh, then I did, this one doesn't count towards the number of 14, but I did want to say I did a reread of Wives and Daughters in the month of May, and it was just delightful. I always feel like crying when I finish my reread. There is something about that story. I just love being in that world. Um, I'm currently doing a rewatch of the miniseries. Uh, I'm taking my time with that, though, because I don't want to be done with that either. Um, but I also don't want to wear out the story, so I will be done with it until next May. But it just makes me very excited every time May rolls around and I just 
I can't get enough of this story. Okay, then lastly, ending on a bit of a downer, and that is Phineas Finn by Anthony Trollope. And I, I just have to say, everyone who was very forceful in the comments about how I needed to try the Palliser series. I need to try the Palliser series. Every time I brought up Anthony Trollope, pretty much people would say, have you read the Palliser series? And I would say every time I am hesitant to read the Palliser series because of how much politics is going to be. It is the whole series involves politicians and much of it, them talking about the current politics of the day. And so Phineas Finn was not a book that I loved. Um, much of it was consumed with the Reform Bill, which interestingly, if you have read Middlemarch by George Eliot, the Reform Bill features in that. So I did think that was a cool detail. Um, that being said, I was really bored for most of this book. And the character of Phineas, I didn't loathe him. I didn't have hatred for him, but I was kind of like, I don't really care what happens to you. And I felt like that for a lot of the characters. One character who um, wants to divorce her husband purely because she's not in love with him and she's bored. I thought she was kind of a selfish brat, honestly, which in the modern world, you're not allowed to say things like that, but that's how I felt about her. Um, yeah, I, I just, there were a couple of really wishy-washy characters and just nobody that I felt like, oh, I am so, I really care about what's going to happen to you. Now, Lady Glencora became a real highlight for me in Can You Forgive Her? And she is not in this book very much. She does feature in it some, um, but I'm glad to have this checked off the list because my dream was to have the Eustace Diamonds to read um, during October because it is supposed to be kind of very close to a sensation novel, but written by Anthony Trollope. And that combination sounds very intriguing to me. Although there is a plot line in Can You Forgive Her that feels a bit sensation novel-y. Um, so I'm hoping if it's anything like that, that it will just be a very gripping read that will be a complete highlight of Victober for me. I don't know if that's going to be the case, um, but we shall see. So those are um, my thoughts on the last six Victorian novels that I read. Five new to me, one reread. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about them. And let's see, next on the Victorian lineup. Ooh, okay. Oh, the kitty is cuddling. All right. I don't want to move her because she's cuddling and it's so cute. Um, I will tell you, I am currently reading The Cloister and the Hearth by Charles Reed, and I am head over heels in love with this book, this historical fiction set in some the Netherlands, some Germany. I think it's the 14th century. Every single chapter is a scream. I can't believe how much I'm enjoying it. I'm really taking my time with that one. I kind of have it on the back burner. I try to read a chapter a day. That doesn't happen. So taking it very slowly with that one. And then I have just started um, The Trumpet Major by none other than Thomas Hardy. I couldn't believe it. I was feeling like reading a Thomas Hardy. And I started the audiobook today and haven't been able to stop listening. So I can't, I, it's not computing in my brain. My brain cannot understand. <laughs> What is happening? I think I've just maybe had enough of a break since the book that shall remain nameless, and I might be enjoying this. So I'm a third of the way through. I know that he's going to smash my heart into a million pieces, though, so I am bracing for that, um, and we'll see how I feel after I finish it. Um, and then I'm reading and just, I could cry, I love it so much, The Moorland Cottage by Elizabeth Gaskell. Her writing is so beautiful and speaks so deeply to the human experience and it's such meaningful reading whenever I do it. Oh, I just, I love Elizabeth Gaskell so much. Um, and that is for my Patreon book club. We'll be discussing The Moreland Cottage at the end of the month. Then um, the book that I did want to grab because the cover is so pretty, I have The Curate of Glaston set by George MacDonald, which are three books. Um, and I think this looks like a great summer read, so I would love to get to that. But then I also still haven't finished up my five-star TBR predictions, and before we know it, Victober will be here. So I need to work on um, that with Torn Sales by Alan Rain, which I think is going to be a very compelling read. I'm very excited. Lucy from Lucy the Reader loved it. Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads loved it, and... Um, what is it called? A Welsh Witch by Alan Rain just knocked my socks off. So I'm very excited to start Torn Sales. Um, but I have so much 
reading to be juggling. Uh, so yes, that is my Victorian reading update. Hopefully I'll be back to doing one Victorian book per video. I will let you know. Have a lovely day everyone and thank you as always for watching and I will be back with another video soon. Bye!